That's, and that's the one on the passenger side. And then the bleeder valve is right under there. I want to back the camera up so you can kind of get an idea. Now they actually say in the shop manual to go buy a bleeder valve and put a bleeder valve on there. But from what I have read and gathered, you can just remove that, fill it until coolant's coming out of there, and then just replace that cap. If you do want to buy the bleeder valve, it's a quarter inch bleeder valve with a 14 thread count. So the process for changing out the coolant is pretty straightforward. We're going to open that cap, open the drain, open the radiator, drain that out, then open up those two block drains, drain any coolant from there, put the thread sealant on the block drains, close those up, open up the bleeder valve, refill the coolant, put the thread sealant on the bleeder valve, close that up, and then couple days, drive it a little bit and keep topping it off the coolant until it's remaining steady. While the coolant's draining, I'm going to remove this tank and try to paint out some of the staining. It's stained, I mean, to a point it looks like rust. I think it's just because the factory coolant was red. But to do so, and if you don't have a pair of these, I just got these for Christmas present. They're hose clamp pliers. And basically, they grasp clamps. Like that. This clamp was obviously stuck on here really tight, but. As opposed to a regular plier, I really like these. And then there's two bolts here. These are 10 millimeter. And then to get the power steering reservoir detached from there, you gotta push this little retaining clip. This, that's the lower hose there. That one will come off the same way as the upper one did. I'm going to do that off camera. Just basically squeeze that clamp, slide it back, pull the hose out. I removed the uh, ducting between the air filter and the throttle body just so you can get a better view of this. And this is one of those things that just frustrates the crud out of me when you have a used car. You can tell here, this is supposed to be a hex key, probably a size 7 metric, would be my guess. But you see it's all stripped and rounded out. That's not from me that was like that. So, God only knows what they tried to put in there, but they failed and then all they did was strip it out. So if this part wasn't vital to replacing the coolant, I'd just leave this alone, but I'm going to have to get this out of here. So I'm going to try one of these star pattern tools and see if I can get a, enough grip in there to do it. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't seem to have anything else that would be suitable. So this is what the uh, engine block drains look like There's one on each side it's a 9 16 socket you can see this one looks like they stripped it a bunch so they've obviously done the coolant before since they stripped this and the fill block so I'm gonna see if I have a die that'll recut those threads a little better and this is what you need to put on the threads, both on the block bolt, drain bolts, and the, the bleeder 
whatever you want to call it, leader bolt. Basically, you put this on the threads, and then it says up to 24 hours you can adjust it without ruining the seal. After 24 hours, you'd have to start over. So, since you may run across this anytime you have a used car, I just wanted to show you what I did to get this stripped bolt out of there. Uh, I couldn't get a regular tool in there, so I found a uh, star pattern socket that was just slightly bigger and believe it or not I actually hammered it in until it was secure and once it was then I was able to turn it and get it out of there. I went to the auto parts store and they didn't have a bleeder valve, in fact they didn't even know what I was talking about, uh, but they did have this bolt that uh, has a normal socket wrench style to it so I opted for that I figure that's going to be longer lasting and uh, be easier to deal with for whoever's got to do this next time rather than trying to replace it with the exact same part so I'll put the thread sealant on there and put that back in there once I've filled this up and this is what the overflow tank's been doing all day it's just been soaked in here trying to get some of this rusty stain off of it. Just like the Crown Vic, these are compartmentalized so you can't just get in there and scrub very well. The lower hose is the toughest one to get on. Because you don't have a lot of room. process is just pouring the coolant in here until it starts to just trickle out of there. And yes, I prefer the green coolant the universal. It seems to work great. So I don't know why all these car manufacturers say that they want you to use a different color. This one works the best, I think. Alright, I filled until there was a trickle coming out of there. I'll tell you, it was somewhere between probably a gallon and a half and two gallons. So once you put in about a gallon and a half, start filling slow. Because when it starts coming out, it, it'll start really coming out if you're pouring it in. So we'll do our thread sealant new cap I wanted to also show you while I had all this apart this is the throttle body here so when you step on the gas it opens up that's wide open throttle or floored it was pretty dirty so I went ahead and cleaned it up with some throttle body cleaner. Just kind of spritz it on there, wipe it off. You see there's still a little bit of dirt. So I got a ton out, believe it or not, even though there's still a little bit more in there. So I have it filled up to the cold max line and I'm going to check it over the next few days of driving. It's typically the, any air that's still left in the system will come out and this level will go down. Another tip, put a little silicone spray on the rubber gaskets there, that'll help those last a bit longer. So for now, we are done.